Guys, Mr. Bowman here. We are carrying on with 1.2 Algebra, that's the MCAT, and this video we're focusing on all the merit questions from 2016. Let's get straight into question number six, that's from the website. Um, the area of the rectangle x squared minus x minus 2, what do you know about the value for x for this rectangle? Um, so I don't really have a lot of information to go on. I suppose the key part is it's the area which is going to be base times height. So that probably means I'm looking to factorize this. So I've got the first dimension by the second dimension, and they're the double brackets that I'll get by factorizing. So let's do that. So x squared minus x minus 2. So this here is thinking, well, what's going to add to negative 1? What's going to multiply to negative 2? And I'm thinking that's going to be negative 2 and positive 1, which means my brackets will be x minus 2, and then x plus 1. So this is when we're going to start thinking about the values for x. And I suppose the go-to when you're talking about rectangles is the sides, they're the opposites, but all of these sides must be positive. Um, and that's because you can't have the, a negative dimension for a rectangle. And you can't have a rectangle with a side of zero. So I know all of these are going to be positive. So what I'm going to do to help me explore my answer. So this dimension here, x minus 2, that must be greater than zero, which would represent any positive number. And the same thing can be said for the second one, x plus 1, also must be greater than zero. If I use a bit of algebra to solve these inequalities, we're going to go plus 2 plus 2, which means x must be greater than 2. And then same thing here, minus 1, minus 1, so x must be greater than negative 1. This side here doesn't really matter because it must be a higher value than that negative 1 value. But this part here is more interesting. This tells us that the sides of this rectangle, for it to actually be a rectangle, the x value must be more than 2. So the x value... must be greater than 2 for a rectangle to exist. And just noting, for the merit questions, this kind of sentence or link to context will probably be a really common theme and something you should get in the habit of doing as well. And now on to question number 7, and I should note... Um, 2016 is a while ago. Do not expect this type of question to still be a merit question. This will probably be an achieved question if you see it come up. Um, but we've been asked to solve that quadratic. So let's get into it. x squared plus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. I can solve a quadratic when it is equal to 0, which we already have, and when it's factorized, which means I need to go ahead and factorize. So I need to think what adds to positive 2 and multiplies to negative 8. And hopefully you're thinking the same as me, 4 and negative 2. So I'm going to factorize x plus 4, x minus 2. That's equal to 0. I'm now going to split this into my two parts. So x plus 4 is equal to 0. And I'm going to go minus 4, minus 4. So the first answer for x is negative 4. We've then got the next one over here. x minus 2 is equal to 0. And I'm going to do plus 2, plus 2 which means my second answer is 2. So those are my two answers. I've solved the quadratic. That's how I can get to 0. To question number 8. And question number 8 is a very weird question. It doesn't really involve too much algebra. Um, so Jason has written down four numbers, and we've got 1, 3, 5, and 7. That's the numbers that were written down. He adds the pairs of numbers to form a triangle. So we can see that 1 plus 3 gets us to 4. And he does this for the whole triangle. So there's another triangle that adds up. And there's another triangle down there. Um, and you can see all the numbers go down until there's one answer left. Investigate what happens if Jason changes the orders of the questions in line number one. So if he muddles all of those around, is the answer going to be different? Um, and what happened, or what you need to do for this is the word investigate means you've just got to mess around and see if it changes. So I would suggest in this question, um, like anything in maths, a one-off thing isn't really a pattern, but if you do two or more, 
you might be able to actually prove that there's a pattern. So let's do at least two, um, maybe even three for this one, but I'll probably stick with two. So there's my triangle, and I'm going to mess around. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch around the three and the one. So let's do three and one. I'm then going to do the same for the five and the seven. So let's get them the other way around. Will this change anything? So they add to four, they add to eight, they add to 12, that gets me to 12, that gets me to 20, and bottom is 32. So interesting, that doesn't change them around. Um, let's try another combination here. So I'm gonna go three, oh sorry, seven, three, one, five. That there gets me to 10, that gets me to four, that gets me to six, that gets me to 14, that gets me to 10, that gets me to 24. So interesting, we've got another one. Um, maybe we'll try one third scenario here. So let's put all the numbers backwards, see if that makes a difference. So I've got seven, five, three, and one. So 12, eight, and four. We can see 12, eight, four here. So that looks like it's gonna be the same. So we've got 20 and 12. 32. So from these observations, we can conclude the order does appear to make a difference. But I should note the marking schedule does allow for a bit of variation. So if you only did these two here, you could probably conclude that it doesn't make a difference. But in my instance, because I did three, I can conclude it does make a difference. Doesn't matter which answer you get, as long as you communicate your answer, that's okay. So what I'm going to say is it appears that the order of line one, and just a reminder, line one, that's what we're actually changing, does affect the answer in line four. So weird question, it doesn't include algebra, which is normally the prerequisite for any of the questions in the algebra exam. Don't expect this to come up in your one for 2022 or beyond, um, but interesting question nonetheless. So that wraps up all the merit questions from the 2016 exam. Hopefully you found it useful. Keep an eye out for the other exams coming up.